Okay, so uh, this is the formal model for independent private value model. And all our examples in the next episode, the second price auction, the first price auction, and, and so on, are going to be built upon the same uh, model. So what are the basics of an auction environment that we are considering in the independent private value model? Well, we have n mini bidders. Well, uh, n is greater than or equal to two, obviously, otherwise uh, it's not interesting. So we should have at least two bidders. So we're going to uh, uh, denote bidders by uh, i. Uh, well, there's a single object that is uh, auctioned, all right? Multiple auction, I'm sorry, multiple object auctions are uh, uh, significantly more complicated than uh, uh, single object auctions. And so here in this chapter, we focus only on single object auctions. Uh, what else? Each bidder I observes a signal, all right, SI, uh, which is distributed according to a cumulative distribution function, capital F, with a typical realization is small SI, which is in this uh, bounded uh, closed interval. Uh, the signal can be at least as lower bar and can be at most as upper bar, okay? So think it this way. I mean, uh, let's say the auction is about an, an, an artwork or a house, let's say. Um, the thing is, uh, each bidder uh, gets an estimate from some expert, all right? But different bidders get different estimates from different experts. Uh, and because uh, later I'm going uh, I'm, I'm to say these, these signals are not correlated. So uh, everybody receives a signal about how much uh, the, 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 the potential value of this house could be. So think the signal that way. And the signal is distributed according to some probability distribution function means, well, you could have picked another uh, expert, quote unquote, and that expert could have given you a different uh, uh, sort of signal. Okay, so think it or interpret it, this assumption uh, this way. And so the, the, the minimum value of this house or the minimum signal you're going to get is as lower bar and the maximum is as upper bar. Obviously, it can be uh, uh, you know, as, as, as lower bar can be zero, for example, and as upper bar can be some finite but very large uh, number. All right, well, F can be uniform distribution, normal distribution, binomial, well, I mean, any way you like. So just some probability distribution function. Well, we assume that the probability distribution function F is continuous with a probability density function F. So we can take a derivative of this production function, in which case we're gonna get the PDF F, okay? Uh, well, this is a technical assumption for simplicity. Trust me, it helps a lot. Uh, all bidders draw their signals from the same distribution function. Well, I mean, in reality, yes, different people can actually be receiving different signals, which actually are generated from a different probability distribution function, which is possible. But trust me, theoretically, it makes everything much easier when everybody uh, receive their signals from the same distribution function. All right, so we don't really have to put this fi here, uh, but trust me, I mean, putting a subscript i here is gonna make a lot of things much more complicated later. And so uh, let's for simplicity assume that everybody draws the signals from the same distribution. Well, bidder's signals, S1 all the way up to Sn, are independent, all right, meaning if you, for example, or if I receive this signal, well, the, the worth of this house, uh, I mean, some signal, uh, you know, SI equal 100K, well, the likelihood that you will get exactly the same signal is not gonna be, uh, is not gonna be different, okay? Conditional on that I got that, 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 that the same uh, signal. So the signals are independently drawn, okay? Uh, well, what else? So bidder's value is, uh, is basically his signal, okay? Just for simplicity, assume that VI, the, 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 the value that you're gonna attach, uh, given that the signal you have is SI, is just SI itself. I mean, yes, some textbooks, uh, you know, just use 
uh, VI is like instead of saying it or calling it signal, uh, the model says each bidder is going to draw his valuation from some distribution. And so they don't use the signal component. Uh, but I use this notation mainly because I also want to talk about common value auctions. And there, uh, remember, the value of the object is the same for everyone, but everybody uh, so basically gets a different signals. And so for that reason, I wanted to stick to this notation. All right, what else? Bidders are risk neutral. Well, this is again a technical assumption. It doesn't really change. Well, I mean, obviously uh, it, it changes the, you know, the strategies and equilibrium and everything. But the thing is, it's, it's not a fundamentally uh, important assumption. Uh, well, what about the utility then for the bidders? Well, uh, I did not specify the utilities mainly because utilities depend on uh, the auction rules, right? Who uh, you know, uh, who pays what depends on the auction rules, and so therefore, our uh, utility functions for the first price auction or the for the second price auction is going to be, or for the all pay auction are not going to be the same. So for that reason, I left the utility function uh, uh, out of this picture. But don't forget, the bidders are going to be risk neutral. Well, given all this, once you specify the auction, meaning uh, who wins the object and who pays what? Well, then we actually uh, define a game, an incomplete information game among bidders. Well, why is it incomplete information? Well, because uh, all players, the bidders, are, uh, are, are, are having private information about how much they value their goods. So the utility functions or the payoff functions are not common knowledge. I know my utility function, but I don't know your utility function. I just have a belief about what your utility function would be because your utility function is gonna depend on your valuation, all right? So I know my utility function or payoff function or payoff, but I don't know your payoff. So therefore, this is a standard game of incomplete information. And because all sealed bid auctions are static games, uh, well, the most of the times the equilibrium concept we're going to be using is Bayesian-Nash equilibrium. Unless we have a stronger equilibrium concept, like for example, uh, uh, dominant strategy. Uh, all right, what else? Well, you may wonder, well, okay, I got it. It's, it's, it's a private value, but why is, why, why, I mean, sort of independent value, but why we call it private value? Well, the reason is, each player's or each bidder's signal is independent of the other guy's signal. So once I receive a signal, I mean, I, I say, well, look, this object worth, uh, worth uh, oh, I don't know, uh, $1 million. Uh, well, does this say anything about how much you value this object? No, because my signal and your signal are completely independent. Well, what else? Uh, because of this, my valuation is independent of your information or your signal. So therefore, it is not only independent, but also a private value model. Uh, well, you may wonder, is like, what about non-private value model? I mean, we have, for example, correlated value model. Well, there, the signals can be correlated, okay? And so the valuations can be correlated. So I know this object worth a uh, million dollar to me, but you know what? You're not so different from me. And so probably your valuation is going to be around 1 million. I, I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it's slightly more than 1 million or less than 1 million, but I know that you're not going to value it, uh, you know, 100 million because you're very similar to me or your probability distribution is very similar to mine. And so if I received 1 million, you should have been receiving, you know, something, uh, you know, around this neighborhood, kind of. So uh, we may allow correlation, but that generates independent uh, 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 a correlated value model, uh, but we're not going to talk about it. Like we're not going to talk about, for example, what if the uh, bidders are not risk neutral, but risk averse. Well, obviously that's going to change the bidding behavior or the strategy. Um, but these are sort of nice extensions. Uh, we mostly talk about uh, uh, in, in more advanced courses or, or in more advanced textbooks. 
Okay, so that's the model we're going to stick uh, for the rest of this chapter. And then uh, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about second price auction and, 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 and explain how we solve it. All right.